Hello, I'm Natasha Foreman. Welcome to the Breaking Bread with Natasha podcast, where I share daily devotionals from my namesake blog. So you can listen on demand to spiritual messages inspired by God's love, as expressed in the Bible and other religious texts. You can read along at breakingbreadwithnatasha.com or sit back and take in the word. Either way, I'm blessed to have you break bread with me. Without further delay, let's begin today's message. Hello, I'm Natasha Foreman. Welcome to the Breaking Bread with Natasha podcast, where I share daily devotionals from my namesake blog. So you can listen on demand to spiritual messages inspired by God's love, as expressed in the Bible and other religious texts. You can read along at breakingbreadwithnatasha.com or sit back and take in the word. Either way, I'm blessed to have you break bread with me. Without further delay, let's begin today's message. Well, hello there, Breaking Bread family. This is Natasha Foreman. Thank you so much for joining me today. Let's look at the book of Galatians, chapter 6, line 1. The translation that I'm reading says, Brothers and sisters, if someone is caught in a sin, you who live by the Spirit should restore that person gently. But watch yourselves, or you also may be tempted. (laughs) yeah if you catch someone in the act of doing wrong or you're made aware of the offense after the effect um, the best way to help them is in the spirit of gentleness the same way God approaches us when we're at fault God doesn't shame us that's our amassed guilt consuming us The second part of this request by Paul comes with a warning to be careful not to be tempted by the same sin the person caught up with, right? Don't get caught up in the same thing they got caught up in. Sometimes our gentleness, when not reinforced properly, can lead us to enable toxic behavior. It can lead us to behave the exact same way. We can start rationalizing the why and how of a situation. Remember, to rationalize is to tell ourselves rational lies. Paul wrote this letter to the churches in Galatia. And if you recall, Paul was not one of Jesus' disciples that served while Jesus was alive in human form. Paul had been a diehard persecutor of those who followed Jesus. Paul was so deep in his studies and practice of Judaism that he became a religious zealot. He was a religious extremist. He had far surpassed the extremes of others. I mean, check out Galatians 1.14. He believed that Jesus and those who followed him were committing sins against God in the traditions of generations past. Paul was trying to destroy everything Jesus created. He was trying to destroy what would be called the church of God. All he knew was the Judaism he knew. He only knew what he was taught by his family and religious teachers. He couldn't conceive that the Jewish guy named Yeshua, right, Jesus, was the Messiah the Jewish people had been praying for and begging God for for hundreds of years. Paul believed Jesus and his followers to be blasphemers and agents of Satan. (laughs) And Paul's loyalty to a self-appointed mission to right the perceived wrongs, he didn't know that the people he was attacking were the people called by God to right the wrongs of Paul and others behaving like him. But how did God and Jesus deal with Paul? Did God torture him? Did he send Paul to a fiery pit? Did he torment him with plagues? No. God approached Paul with grace and gentleness. God revealed Jesus in Paul. Paul was visited by Jesus in a revelation. Jesus didn't ridicule and shame Paul. He instead revealed the truth and called on Paul to lead a new charge that was truly focused on God's mission and plans. 
What did the people in various towns that were members of the churches of Judea say and do when they heard that the persecutor they had heard about was now a preacher of the faith he tried to destroy? (laughs) They didn't turn into an angry mob and attack him. They didn't throw him in jail or nail him to a cross. They didn't spread propaganda about him throughout the towns. Nope. They saw a changed heart and they praised God. Read Galatians 1 lines 23 and 24 if a religious zealot's heart and mind could change for the better then you know the credit belongs to god we're called to reflect the qualities of god and direct that loving energy towards others especially those who have done wrong and caused harm paul shares in his letters that if god can change his heart and life then god can change anyone's heart Paul was on the far end of extremism and God brought him back to the center God rooted Paul in the proper soil Paul didn't realize that he and others had perverted Judaism and were making it into something God never wanted they didn't have discernment their judgment was clouded God would now use Paul and others to try to correct those wrongs. Paul devoted his life to doing that. Think about today's Christian church and those who call themselves Christian. Think about the revisionists who want to mistranslate and reinterpret the Bible and the history of that era to align with their agenda. Think about the extremists who have no qualms about persecuting and killing others and claiming to do so in the name of Jesus. Pray that God touches their hearts and they yield to his ways. Pray that your heart is willing to reach out in the spirit of gentleness. Pray for discernment and strength to not succumb to the sins of others you're trying to reach. Make sure that while standing up against hate and ignorance, you don't get consumed and controlled by that energy. Let's pray on it. Thank you, Father, for peace, harmony, love, family, and good friendships that surround me. I understand that in order to receive fully, I must give fully. I pray for a heart that forgives quickly and that the spirit of gentleness pours out of me to bless others. I ask to be forgiven by others as quickly. I pray that I willingly embrace the reform Paul's of this world as easily as the churches of Judea embraced him when he went to Syria and Cilicia. I pray for discernment and strength to not fall for the temptations I stand against. Father, I thank you for life and another day to praise and worship you. In Jesus' name, I pray to you and thank you for answered prayers. Amen. And with that, family, I pray that you are blessed, that you see and embrace your blessings, and that you are blessing the others. I love you all. Take care. Hi, family. If what I shared in today's message resonates with you, I hope you will share it with others. Feel free to leave positive comments and reviews on my site, breakingbreadwithnatasha.com, and through whichever podcast provider that you're listening to me. Each day, I work to be a better steward and servant. I hope you will join me in sharing God's love and truth and rebuking the enemy's lies. Now go out there and make today an awesome day. I love you all. Hi family. If what I shared in today's message resonates with you, I hope you will share it with others. Feel free to leave positive comments and reviews on my site, breakingbreadwithnatasha.com and through whichever podcast provider that you're listening to me. Each day, I work to be a better steward and servant. I hope you will join me in sharing God's love and truth and rebuking the enemy's lies. Now go out there and make today an awesome day. I love you all.